from day one, shelter has been one of those things that humans have needed. When a lot of our cities were established, they were established on rivers, and rivers have always flooded. That's what they're supposed to do. As the cities developed, population growth, changing climate, we've put in a lot more kind of impervious surfaces like concrete and roads and things like that, which is obviously exacerbating the problem. And there's no room for the water to go, so it really is a design issue and forever basically. We've used shelter as a way of adapting to our environment. It's just that now we need to think a little bit harder about how we do that. So when we first started working in this area, it was really about testing ideas and coming up with good principles for flood resilient design that are not only affordable, but can also withstand severe weather events. We spent a lot of time looking at different material types, talking to builders about different techniques, understanding the local context and then applying whichever principles work best. We worked closely with insurers, for instance, local authorities, and with our clients, working out what the problem is and then coming up with those solutions to solve that problem. Having an architect like James was all of the inspiration behind the decisions we've made. We know that our property in 1974, it flooded, and the flooding that happened in 2011, our whole neighbourhood here was pretty much underwater. Came up our street, reached our driveway, and it didn't come uh, onto our property. But we live in a floodplain, it's very normal for it to flood, and with climate change, it makes sense for us to you know, be cognizant of that fact and just plan and just build in a way that is going to be consistent with what we expect the climate to be. We can't control severe weather events. However, through lived experiences, we can learn, design and adapt. And in terms of flood resilience work, generally the principles are really simple, affordable and are adaptable to any environment in any setting around the world. We typically like water resistant or waterproof materials Hardwood timbers work quite well, softwood timbers don't. Anything that doesn't soak up water and create a mould issue. And it's really important to consider a floor plan that's easy to wash. In the case of the client's house that we've just finished, the external wall construction is designed to emulate a traditional Queenslander with a single skin construction where we don't have any physical cavity. Internally, We've used a Hebel block construction, which is very easy and cheap to use. It's essentially like an aerated concrete. We've waterproofed over that. Again, we don't have any physical cavity. We've used a geopolymer concrete slab, and that concrete slab, it's one of the first times in Australia's history that a geopolymer concrete's been used. Door sills that are set down, and in all the bedrooms we've got louvers that come down to the ground rather than raised up so that you can wash it out easily and there's not as much muck. We'll have a separate circuit upstairs and down, so if anything downstairs gets wet, it switches off, but you can still use upstairs. Anything that could get wet will essentially kind of separate. It's about living with water and putting principles in place to recover from that next event. And these are practical solutions. Being resilient is just building in a way that makes more sense in the long term. It does take a little bit of thought, a little bit of challenging, some you know, ideas that you might have had previously, uh, but otherwise it's doable and, and we have that extra confidence that you know, when that storm hits, when that flood hits, uh, that, that we've prepared for it.